Hey, Uncle Ronis back again for uh, some nice, pleasant Sunday morning jazz playing in the background. I will quickly show you this. I've actually shown it very recently, maybe in my last video actually. Um, this is uh, Dan Callahan in the Jazz Quarter Float. This is a record that came out last year, I believe, recorded here, uh, recorded in Christchurch. Trying to get a lot of sunlight coming through there. Um, yeah, so anyway, that, that's playing behind me. Uh, I don't have a lot to show, but um, I felt the urge to make a video, so here it is. Um, so I had a few basically just coming in the mail, really. I picked up some trade me, uh, some trade me sales. Um, spent far more than I should be, but um, two records came up on trade me that I was quite uh, keen to get my hands on. Um, bands that from the 70s in New Zealand 70s um, that I've been collecting so I'll get to those in a minute um, finally got a copy of this one this came out last year late last year Coretta it's a compilation this they've got three albums out two of which I have on vinyl one on CD um, and this is the latest thing but it's really a compilation per se of earlier recordings plus some I think one or two new tracks um, there's actually only eight tracks all up um, pretty grotesque cover it's actually the carcass of some dead animal that's been stripped off its meat is it a painting it's not actually a photograph I could be a painting by the looks of it I mean, pretty gross anyway musically, musically it's um, it's uh, post post rock, isn't it? Post rock kind of stuff. So, yeah, pleased to have that. It's a pretty good. Um, they have a great band. They are a really great band. One of the better, yeah, definitely in the top of the pile on that style of music. Uh, finally, got my hands on a copy. This has been on my want list um, since it came out. Uh, well, again, this came out last year, some stage, so 2018. This is another one of the archive series. Although there's not a lot of information apart from the little symbol on the on the sign on the end there to tell us that it is an archive one, but it's a recording from 1976, uh, solo Neil Young. It's a really good one. I think it's better. It's got slightly better quality and sounding than the Hitchhiker one that came out. Um, that was the last one I picked up. So yeah, really pleased to have that and. Um, Someone reckoned it wasn't that dynamic a recording, but it's basically him on piano and guitar, so it's not a lot to really record. It was recorded onto a cassette from the from the sound desk or something, or hooked up to the sound desk, the notes about it in there, um, by one of his uh, people who were in his crew, and they've had been, had, um, been using that tape for many years, and now they've, done, I think they've done a great job of mastering it. Um, this one's been on my radar for a, a couple of three years. This is a um, this is a record store day release from 2016. It's a double vinyl reissue of um, the Mint Chicks Crazy Yes Dumb No LP. Originally, originally came out on oh I don't know, not 100 percent sure. Mint Chicks were are a kind of alt rock. Um, kind of post-punky sort of band um yeah i kind of missed them on their first you know when they came out um the guys have gone on the two brothers the uh, nielsen brothers have gone on to do a lot of other stuff and i've got uh, one of them is then is the unknown mortal orchestra who have shown you a lot of their music um pretty cool artwork yeah, anyway this is this like i say this came out in 2016 but it's a double lp um ooh, does it play at 45 i think it does you know, they do that for audio file, you know, they reckon it's better, but to be honest, this sort of stuff isn't hugely well recorded. I mean, it's, it's, it's good, but it's not massively well recorded, so, it's, you know, to me it's a bit pointless. So, um, but anyway, unfortunately, the, the what's put me off it for so long was the price. I mean, it was selling for up to $80, um, so I managed to, yeah, you know, and, and I, I mean, this is put out by Festival, so it's a big company, so they, there was a fair lot of presses, so it's, it's, it's still around and it's still available, but the price has come down to about 40 45 now. Um, so I'm pleased to pick that up. Um, some pretty outrageous artwork, um, <laughs> especially that one. And um, anyway, uh, 
the mint chicks. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not hugely, over, hugely taken with their music so far. I mean, I think it will grow on me, but it's not as great as I was expecting it to be. Um, I don't. Yeah, like I, said, I really missed them when they came out the first time round in the in the two thousands, and uh, didn't really know much about them. I'd heard of them, but I never heard any of their music. Um, not not quite the stuff that's going to get played all over the radio here. Um, now I, there was another Rince Chicks record that came out on Record Store Day this year, and it kind of snuck out with with hardly anybody knowing about it. Um, I'm not sure what sort of limitations are on the release, so um, I actually got a copy of that, but it's boxed up, ready to be sent back to the shop because unfortunately it had a pressing fault on the um, um, first track on side two. The album's called Screens, and it was. The last album they put out after this, after look, um, Crazy Yes Dumb, Dumb No. Now I think Crazy Yes Dumb No was their second LP, so they've got uh, another one out before that. Could be wrong on that. I'm not like I said, I'm not really a, that knowledgeable on them. But anyway, now I, I will get it again because I've got to send it back and see if they can find another copy because out of at least five or six people that I knew had copies from Facebook. Um, three of us had the issue, which was a little ripple on the start of the track, and on my VPI, it basically would jump the needle off the track um, and, and jump it. And I did play it on the other turntable, and it actually played okay on that. I've got a heavier setting; it's got a, about another half a gram of weight on it, and it seemed to be enough to stop it from jumping. But you could still see the the stylus wobbling, so that wasn't. Um, now, that was a bit unfortunate, so hopefully it's not something you can actually pick up visually. You know, the two trade me, um, the two trade me real, um, pickups that came this week, and I've got a couple more in the mail, but I had a hankering to do a video this morning, um, so I'm going to do it now. Wait instead of waiting for the other two to arrive. Uh, Ragnarok, Ragnarok's first LP from 1975, I think. I believe I'm trying to see a date on the back here, and I can't see one. Why can I not see a date? Oh well, out on Revolution Records. So I, um, yeah, I've been keen to get my hands on this, and I have seen some come up on Trade Me. There was one that was a bit cheaper than this, but it was a little bit rough. This is in beautiful condition. It plays fantastically well. Um, just a you know minor bit of surface noise in the back of it. Uh, this is the, the first LP with um, uh, Leah Malfred. Um, she's a singer. She went on to become I know it's a name, It's not. she's not a household name, but she actually came reasonably well known in the industry and wrote some songs with some quite big players, whom I can't actually tell you off the top of my head right now. Um, and if I guessed, I would probably be wrong. Um, she only stayed with them for the first LP, uh, and I'm mean, clean. And they only they only put out the two LPs, and the other one I actually picked up late last year, which I've shown you before. But this was the second LP. Um, so she left the band, and they carried on and put this one out in 1976. Uh, Rooks, and I actually like this one. At the moment, I like this one better. I think, um, yeah, not so many vocals because she was the singer, and I'm assuming that she left, but the rest of the guys stayed. Oh no, there are lyrics all over this. Sorry, yeah, there are lyrics, but I did, yeah, I did like this. I did like this one better, but I've only listened to the new one a couple of three times so far, and um, I am enjoying it. So really pleased to have those. Those are quite rare. They've never been reissued in any other format, so um, I don't believe, don't believe there's CDs or anything around. Um, so they aren't, they aren't big big ticket items, but I did pay. I've had to, I've had to, I've had to raise my ceiling on what I'm paying for records, um, the rarer stuff that I really would like, and I am really keen to get my hands on a lot of that '70s New Zealand stuff. As I said before, there's not a huge amount of of it around, um, as in there's not a lot of records um, put out by New Zealand bands back in those days. You could quite easily have a collection of a hundred odd records and cover pretty much most of the bases in New Zealand music back in the '70s and '60s, maybe a little bit more, but they didn't sell in bigger numbers, and they aren't easy to find. The other one I picked up from Trade Me this week is this one. So again, this is another uh, epic 1970s. This is from 1973, and this is the Quincy Conserve... Um, what's this called? Tasteful. So um, this is 
Absolutely. I this I love this band. I think that they are probably the pick of the seventies New Zealand band. It's very intricate, complex, poppy, rocky, um, not proggy really, but could be in places, I suppose. Um, yeah, they were a fairly big band, one, two, three, four, five guys playing all sorts of instruments. Um, they put out two LPs and then they kind of split up and then they kind of got back together again. Um, this LP was recorded live. Um, it says the object of this album was to present on record a live, a real live sound of the Quincy Conserve. The recording was virtually done in one take with a minimum amount of overdubbing while maintaining, maintaining ex- effective stereo sound. There was no electronic wizardry contained. Just Quincy's playing their shit, their asses off. Um, for a live in studio, it's very good quality. It's, I mean, they, they, their recordings are, are really cool. Um, and yeah, I just adore this record. And and um, really, really pleased to have it paid. It is quite rarer than this one. This is the one I picked up last year. This was their second LP they put out before they before they um, split. And this is actually more. I think it's almost more of a compilation. It says from in memor- memoriam of the Quincy Conserve from '67 to '71. Um, there was an album that came out before this. Um, as I said last year, when I picked this one up, and I paid seventy dollars for this, and it's in pretty good nick. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to afford to buy their other records. And the one that the one I just showed you, the um, taste for, I picked it up for half the price that it's going for on Discogs, um, or, or, or under half. So yeah, I'm really pleased to pick that up. I didn't pay more than I would like to, but um, as I said, I've kind of really, if I really want these records, I have to raise the ceiling up a bit on what I'm prepared to pay. Work's actually become very plentiful, plentiful now. So I've got two more 70s albums coming in the post um, that I've just picked up over the weekend. So they should be here by the end of next week, um, but I won't have enough to make another video until I get some more. There is a bunch of new releases coming up, and um, as the funds come in, I shall be starting to get onto those. So there was the new Aldous Harding records out yesterday, um, or day, on Friday actually. Um, here, so I'll get onto that as soon as I can. Um, and there's another bunch on, another bunch I have on my flying out want list that I really like to get my hands on. So, um, yep, that's me again, and uh, we'll see you again in the future.